Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters, your Magic the Gathering source that helps you command your budget. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support. Hey everyone, Mitch coming in for the Commander's Quarters studio. Welcome to the show. So throughout this year, we've got nearly 200 brand new commanders to build with and to brew around. Now, Wizards might be done with making commanders for this year, but the custom magic community never stops coming up with unique and inspiring commanders for us to build around. So today, let's go through the top five custom Dragon Highlander commanders as voted on by their community. If you enjoy thinking up and designing magic cards, go ahead and check out their Discord. I'll include the link in the description. And now let's get started with number five. Coming into fifth place, we've got Sithris Umbran Atrophist from Alano. Sithris is a 2-3 Spectre with Flying and Lifelink that costs 1 black black. He has whenever a spell you control causes only one opponent to discard one or more cards, each other opponent discards that many cards. And then his adventure is a sorcery known as Atrophic Insight that costs a black. It says each opponent reveals three cards from their hand, a player of your choice discards one of the revealed cards at random. Alano had this to say about Sithris. Sithris was designed to overcome one of discard strategy's weaknesses in Commander. That the majority of powerful discard effects affect a single opponent. By widening the effect of such cards, Sithris essentially acts as a mono-black discard copy effect, giving you an inherent mana advantage on each of your discard spells, providing an interesting variation compared to other discard commanders. I definitely agree with Alano's assessment. Sithris helps shore up the main weakness of discard in that most discard spells just affect one player. By stretching their effect to each opponent, it gives you two or three times more value. Some cards that you might want to consider for a Sithris deck are Whispers of Emrakul, Liliana's Caress, and Waste Knot. Whispers of Emrakul makes an opponent discard one or two cards at random, and now with Sithrits, it's going to be all opponents instead. Liliana's Caress and similar effects make opponents lose life whenever they discard a card. And Waste Knot gives you incredible benefits depending on what is discarded. Whenever an opponent discards a creature card, create a 2-2 black zombie creature token. Whenever an opponent discards a land card, add black black to your mana pool. And whenever an opponent discards a non-creature non-land card, draw a card. And again, with Sithrits in play, there's going to be a lot of cards discarded each turn. Also, as a fun side note, Sithris is actually the first card in the Custom Dragon Highlander community with art specifically commissioned for the card. I've included a link in the description below to the art station for Olia Chibrakova, so if you want to see this piece and others, go ahead and check that out. But next up, let's move on to number 4. And coming in at 4th place, we've got Zithril the Corruptor from the Revanarchist. Zithril is a 3-3 Aetherborn Warlock that costs 1 blue, black, red. Zithril has other Aetherborn you control have Cumulative Upkeep, Pay 1 Life, Haste, and get plus plus 1 for each age counter on them. And then you can discard a card and target creature you control becomes an Aetherborn in addition to its other types. The Revanarchist had this to say about Zithril. Zithril is a Grixis reanimator commander with an Aetherborn subtheme. Pitching juicy reanimation targets to give other creatures haste is very effective, however the life cost stacks up fast. So combining it with creatures that have powerful death abilities like Kakusho and Kaiga prevents you from burning through your life toll too quickly. In my opinion, the Revanarchist definitely made a really interesting and unique commander with Zithril. It has that nice push and pull of a commander that gives you that benefit, but also it comes with a cost. You can essentially give any of your creatures haste, and they can grow bigger, but there is that life cost to it. But you can also benefit from creatures you actually want to sacrifice as well. And again, sacrificing and discarding creatures with the reanimation deck is actually a good thing. As the Revanarchist mentioned, death triggers like Kakusho and Kaigas can be huge for a deck like this. When Kakusho dies, each opponent loses 5 life, and then you gain life equal to life lost this way. And then when Kaiga dies, you gain control of target creature. And a reanimation spell like Victimize can be perfect in a deck like this. It says choose to target creature cards in your graveyard, sacrifice a creature if you do return the chosen cards to the battlefield tapped. So you're getting two creatures back at the cost of sacrificing one, which can even benefit you with those death triggers. Overall, Zithril is a great commander, and I really enjoy that benefit and cost aspect. But now it's time for us to move on to number three. And coming in at third place, we've got Silum Fenris General from Felix Fortuna. Silum is a 4-4 Wolf Noble with Vigilance that costs one green, white, blue. Whenever Asylum deals combat damage to a player or blocks, you get an experience counter. Whenever Asylum attacks, you create X11 white wolf creature tokens with Vigilance that are attacking where X is the number of experience counters you have. Felix Fortuna had this to say about Asylum. Asylum wants experience counters and plenty of them. Being able to get the first hit on someone is important so that you can start proliferating if need be. Even if you don't, cards that give protection from all colors or creatures or giving him unblockable is important. He is a Voltron-style commander that can go wide to solve the problem of late game with Voltron decks. 
I love the direction of this commander, and I think Felix Fortuna did a great job. I definitely agree that getting that first hit in there is incredibly important. So you're going to want to suit up Asylum to make it more powerful and probably add in some double strike effects in there as well. Because again, by hitting twice, you're going to get twice as many experience counters. But of course, getting him through in the first place is key, so something like Key of the City can come in huge. It has tap, discard a card, up to one target creature can't be blocked this turn. That's a small price to pay, especially considering you can pay two to replace that card. And then, like Felix Fortuna mentioned, proliferate effects like Evolution Sage can come in handy as well. Now, whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you can proliferate to give you even more experience counters. And finally, Beastmaster Ascension can be a fantastic finisher for this deck. Attacking with seven or more creatures is going to be really easy with a deck like this, so this makes your commander even bigger and turns your tokens into six sixes. Again, a fantastic design from Felix Fortuna, letting you go tall and go wide at the same time. But now it's time for us to move on to number two. And coming in at second place, we've got a fantastically named commander with the Clock That Stopped from Damsel. The Clock That Stopped is a 4-4 Scarecrow with Wither that costs 3 blue, black, red. It has at the beginning of each player's upkeep. If it's the first upkeep this turn, they lose 1 life. After this upkeep, they get an additional upkeep step followed by additional draw step. And Damsel had this to say about this commander. The goal with the Clock That Stopped was to create something flexible for my favorite archetypes. It can support Nekusar draw strategies and upkeep effect tribal deck and even many Chaos cards benefit from its ability. You use the clock that stopped in combination with cards that involve the draw step and or upkeep and use its ability to give those cards extra value. I really like this design from Damsel and it can definitely enable some interesting strategies. There are a lot of decks out there that could really use an extra upkeep or draw step for themselves or even for their opponents. For example, a curse deck would love your opponents to have extra upkeeps. And speaking of curses, the card that this most reminds me of is Paradox Haze. It has at the beginning of Enchanted Player's first upkeep each turn, that player gets an additional upkeep step after this step. But again, the clock that stops also gives an additional draw step. And that can be absolutely brutal in combination with something like Nekusar that punishes your opponents for drawing cards. Or that upkeep effect can be very useful for a card like Dryer that suspends cards for cheap. Speeding up the clock on some huge drops can easily win you the game. Again, I really like the unique design of this commander and its ability to enable some really interesting strategies. But now it's time for us to move on to number one. And the custom commander that came in first place this month is... Vunuov the Leech from Fluffy Deathbringer. Vunuov is a 3-3 human noble that costs blue, black, red. He has when Vunuov the Leech enters the battlefield, and at the beginning of your upkeep, you may have target opponent become the monarch. As long as you're not the monarch, the monarch plays with the top card of their library revealed, you may play it, and you may spend mana as though or mana of any type to cast that spell. Fluffy Deathbringer has this to say about Vunuov. The fun of Vunuov comes down to two things, variance and influence. The way the steal ability functions provides a just wide enough range between withing and producing diverse value. Every turn is different, and so every game is. As for influence, passing the Monarch around can lift up a player dragging behind, protect a player from attacks lest they have their top deck stolen, and give each player vital information about an opponent's future resources. I agree 100% with Fluffy Deathbringer. This commander is one of the best designed commanders that I've seen in quite some time. It's like a somewhat kinder and more political send triplets in a way. The ability to pass around the Monarch has a lot of implications. You can use it to help a player catch up, you can help reveal someone's future intentions, and you can actually just steal things with it as well. It's again that push and pull with a benefit and a cost. If you give Monarch to the most powerful player, you're giving them a benefit, but you get to steal their cards. And of course, there's always that chance of whiffing as well. I absolutely love this design, and some cards that I would consider would be Codex Shredder, Thran Dynamo, and Essence Flux. Codex Shredder, or any other card they can repeatably mill, is fantastic for a deck like this. If the Monarch has something bad on top, you can just mill it and hope for something better. And then hyper-efficient mana rocks like Thran Dynamo can be fantastic in this kind of a deck. For 4 mana, it taps to add colorless, colorless, colorless. But again, you can utilize that mana in any way that you want to cast your opponent's spells. So in that case, it's essentially tapped to add 3 mana of any 3 colors. And then blink and flicker cards like Essence Flux can serve a dual purpose for this deck. They can protect your commander and at the same time help you choose a new Monarch. Again, I love the design of this and all the other commanders that I feature today. And again, make sure that you check out the fantastic Custom Dragon Highlander community. I've included their Discord invite in the description below. And with that, the show's coming to a close, so it's my turn to hear from you. So in the comments below, let me know what your thoughts on these commanders are. Which of these is your favorite and why? So yeah, let me know in the comments below. And as always, thanks again and have a good one.